So if I'm not mistaken, this is my fifth presidential election prediction map. It'll only be my second for Trump against Harris. I think I did three for Trump versus Biden. This will now be two, Trump versus Harris. Uh, we're going to get right into it today. Pretty much self-explanatory. We're going to be having the four categories, tilt, lean, likely, uh, and safe. And we're also going to allow myself toss-ups, which I do not usually do in these videos. We're going to allow toss-ups this time because this election is unfortunately extremely tight. So without further ado, let's get into it. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. If I may impose upon you, don't forget to subscribe as we get into this video for the most conservative commentary online. Thank you so much. Back to the video. Okay, here we go. Our categories for today are as follows. Tilt will be uh, one and a half points and less. Lean will be 1.6 points to three and a half. Likely will be 3.6 to 8 points. Safe will be 8.1 points and up. And I know a lot of people have safe like up at 12 points and higher. The fact is a lot of states that are, are simply safer Kamala this go around, like Colorado, probably will not go for by 12 points. Uh, maybe not even 10 points. Maybe might get 10. But the fact is Colorado is a very st safe state for Kamala. So I do my categories a little bit different than a lot of um, <clears throat> political commentators or election map predictors. So... Uh, Again, one and a half or less for tilt, 1.6 to three and a half for lean, likely 3.6 to eight, safe, 8.1 and up. Okay, uh, let's start on the East Coast here. We're going to start with some safe Kamala Harris states. We've got Maine, we've got Vermont, we've got Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. We've also got New York, which, yes, is going to be safe. Uh, what else do we have here? We're going to go over to the West Coast here. We've got Washington. We've got Oregon. We've got California. We've got Hawaii, which puts her at 162. And as long as I'm thinking about it already, we'll give her Illinois as well. And uh, that's all we're going to put, I believe, in safe states, if I'm not mistaken. For safe states for Trump, we're going to go uh, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska. Nebraska is first and third, as well as the state at large. Kansas, Oklahoma, Utah. Uh, Texas will go to Trump by more than eight by eight point one, so more th or up. So I think over eight, uh, Trump gets Texas, Louisiana, Missouri, Arkansas, Iowa, Indiana, Kentucky, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, uh, Florida. I think might very well go for Trump by more than eight. I'm not as confident about that as I once was. I think you know we always try to guess conservatively here. Um, Conservative, not in terms of political sense, but conservative in terms of um, underestimating how well our side will do, as is usually the case. So let's go ahead and say it's a little bit of an underperformance compared to what we were initially expecting in Florida. We will give um, Trump a likely in Florida, but if it's likely, I think he'll still crack seven. Will he quite crack eight? I'm not sure. I think he will, but I'm not positive. Let's just put it in likely for now, for sure. He also gets South Carolina, West Virginia, and I think Ohio will go to him by more than eight points as well. Now, historically here, I missed some stuff, uh, so let's make sure I don't do that this time. We're going to give him uh, Trump Maine's uh, second, whoops, second congressional district, which means Harris gets the first and the state at large. I always mess up something in these videos, don't I? Um, okay, so that leaves all, that's all our safe states, if I'm not mistaken, except for, I did catch it this time, Alaska also goes to Trump. So, we're at 180, no, 219 for Trump. We are at 183 for Kamala Harris. Now, we do have some likely states upcoming. <clears throat> you may recall when um, Trump was uh, running against Biden, Biden was really floundering. Trump started to catch up in Minnesota and Virginia, which were the two states people were talking about where it was like, I don't know, they could in theory go to Trump. It'd be almost impossible, but maybe they could. And some people were starting to get really excited. Minnesota and, and uh, Virginia are going to flip for Trump. That's not going to happen. Uh, Michigan, uh, Minnesota is going to go for Kamala by a likely margin, 3.6 to 8 points, somewhere in there. I'm guessing around 4 or 5 point win for her there, maybe even 6 uh, in Minnesota. In Virginia, my home state where I currently reside, she is also... Okay, here's the deal. Lean is 1.6 to 3.5. I could see a world where Trump keeps it under 3.5 here. In November, like if it was held today, if the election was held today, maybe he keeps under three and a half. I'm not super confident about that. We'll see what happens with um, 
uh, you know, all this various stuff going around the country, the strike and the vice presidential debate just happened and uh, the, the disaster going down in Western North Carolina and Georgia and South Carolina. I mean, so there's just a lot of factors at play here. Um, and Southwest Virginia has been impacted by that as well, which is heavily rural and heavily Republican. So because, again, we're trying to be conservative, I'm going to say Virginia goes to likely Kamala, but it's likely and I think Trump may even keep it under five points here. Um, I don't. I'm not under any illusions. He's going to win the state. That's just not going to happen, barring some completely unforeseen something happening. Um, I don't think he's going to uh, win here. Obviously, can I see him keeping it at three and a half or an under for a lean margin? Sure. For now, we're going to say likely Kamala, probably somewhere in that four to five point range. Um, New Mexico also going to be uh, likely, based on everything I'm hearing here, is kind of shifting a little bit the demographic there largely hispanic demographic um is kind of shifting toward the gop in new mexico but slowly and that's not probably going to change the state status this election probably looking at the higher side of likely here colorado uh 8.1 up i said it was safe earlier i do think it is safe for kamala i think it will go to her by over eight points um let's see here let's go to new hampshire real quick new hampshire um, based on the polling we're seeing, Trump is not doing well. He'll probably do worse. He'll certainly do worse there than he did against Hillary, very likely. Uh, I think he lost it to Biden by about seven points. Well, I'm guessing it could be somewhere in that range again, maybe a little lower. But we're going to say that is likely Kamala. So as we're down to our seven swing states, although I hesitate to put North Carolina as a swing state per se, some polling, though, does show North Carolina uh, Trump winning Georgia by more than North Carolina. But regardless, um, Let's see here. So we have, we have our seven swing states left, plus Nebraska's second congressional district. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Kamala's at 225. Trump's at 219. I think for Nebraska's second congressional district, I think Kamala does currently win that. I'm here, I've heard some uh, people who are very optimistic that Trump will flip it. Uh, so other folks that don't think so um, is my understanding of kind of how it is. I think people are very divided on it. So I think what we're probably going to say is uh, Nebraska's second is a lean con or even a I can see Trump keeping under one and a half. Let's say uh, that district is a tilt Kamala. How about that? Keep everyone happy. Um, hopefully. Let's go over to North Carolina. And by the way, just for the record, I know historically I consult polling in these. I'm not going to consult polling in this one. I've watched a lot of stuff with... Uh, updates with polling, so I'm just going to kind of remember what I've seen in my head, but also it's just kind of my gut feeling right now, and uh, I think often those kind of, those someone who's watched politics for quite a while, like myself, have a much better idea of how uh, something's going to go down than if you look at polling, polling such as it showed uh, Biden winning Wisconsin by seven in 2020 and, uh, you know, tying in Texas. So anyway, uh, let's start in Georgia. I think Georgia is going to, and by the way, this episode is is all assuming that this election is legit, which I certainly hope and pray it will be. I don't know for a fact that it will be, though. So for the sake of argument, we're assuming it's legit. And there's no or very few shenanigans, I should say. So we'll see what happens. But I think Georgia's got better elections than they did the first time around. I think they've cleaned it up since. So we're going to say Georgia is a lean Trump state, uh, 1.6 to 3.5 points. I'd almost put it in tilt Trump. But I think he'll carry it by over one and a half. I don't know. I'm not super confident about that. If it is lean, we're going to it be on the very low side of lean. So just so I don't have all these states as tilt one candidate or another, let's put Georgia as lean. But I think you're going to see it right around that 1.2 to 1.7 margin, somewhere in there. So let's say Georgia is lean for now, cautiously. I think the same goes for North Carolina. I think Trump will win North Carolina. Um, I think he'll get it by over 1.6. Despite what the polling says, I think Trump's going to win uh, Georgia by more than he does. Or, excuse me. I think Trump is going to win um, North Carolina more than he does Georgia, or by a bigger margin than he does Georgia, I think. I'm not entirely confident about that, but I think North Carolina is going to go to Trump more than Georgia does. Um, I again, it's just kind of a feeling I have. Historically, I think that's what we see. North Carolina rarely votes for Democrats on a federal level. Georgia has the habit, like, for example, voting for, uh, rarely votes for Republicans, or does not as often vote for Republicans on the federal level. Georgia doesn't, such as their Senate races, but 
they always vote for Republicans in the state. In North Carolina, it's kind of reversed. So we're going to say North Carolina is also a lean state. Let's jump over here. Uh, no, let's do Michigan first. Michigan, uh, not much hesitation here. This is going to be tilt Kamala Harris based on everything I'm seeing. I think she will win it by – might even increase her lead a little bit. I, the thing is I'm so hesitant to predict these blue wall states – to split with each other, but from everything I'm seeing, it seems like this might be the year that those states finally do not all vote in unison with each other. So we'll see. For now, I'm giving Michigan to Kamala by probably around a 0 0.8 point margin, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 margin, something like that. Maybe not even that, maybe half a point. So uh, Michigan goes to Kamala. It's a big pickup for her. Trump needs to hold these. She needs to hold these. So she gets that one. Let's go to Arizona, kind of jumping around here. Arizona is going to be a lean Trump state. He's actually polling the best here out of any state um, in the country, uh, it's, sorry, any swing state in the country right now, uh, last I heard. So Arizona, I do think, is going to go to Trump. We'll see what happens in Maricopa County, how well their election goes. Again, this is assuming it's legit. I think he gets lean. And you know what? Despite the many times I've said it and I keep going back and forth, I'm going to change Georgia to tilt. I keep saying, like I said, I didn't really want them all to, these all to be lean, but these two are lean. I just have a better feeling. I always say, like I said earlier, I try to guess conservatively, and I'm just not sure I'm entirely confident Trump is going to get Georgia by over a one and a half points. So let's put Georgia in tilt. Regardless, Trump keeps it. Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia. He's got to keep those. He's at 262 now. Let's go over to Wisconsin. How about that? Wisconsin is going to be the first state which I have labeled as a toss up. Uh, you see it there, the yellow. I really could not tell you which way this state goes. I think. Michigan uh, goes Kamala a little bit. I think Wisconsin goes Trump a little bit. The demographics do favor Trump here. It's a more rural state than somewhere like uh, Michigan. But it just the polling I'm seeing is not great. I know polling overestimates Trump here, but they did at least, you know, in theory, vote for Trump, uh, vote for Biden in 2020. Again, I think Trump should win this. I'm just not entirely confident. I don't have a great feeling about Wisconsin this time around. But I think Trump very well could and should win it. So we're going to give Wisconsin a toss-up for now since I'm not entirely confident. Let's go over to Nevada. Nevada is going to be... I've predicted Nevada in every single one of my maps to either tilt GOP or I think maybe one I had a toss-up. I think this is going to tilt to Kamala Harris now. I feel like some momentum in Nevada has been lost. I think Trump would have won Nevada pretty handily over Biden, uh, potentially anyway. I'm not at all confident he's going to win over Harris. I think she might do better there than Biden would, uh, being right next to California. Not so much because she's that popular in California or anything, but because demographically speaking. So, like I said, I'm not entirely sure this one's close, but I don't want to do another toss-up right back to back. That's not even really the reason. I just, I don't have a good feeling now. I thought Nevada was going to go. My confidence was kind of shaken, and I keep thinking Trump's probably going to lose this. And sadly, if he does, Sam Brown's probably not going to pull out the Senate. But right now, I rate that Senate race probably as a toss-up, though I'd have to go look at the polling. Maybe we'll do another Senate prediction soon. So uh, I do think we're going to see Nevada here go to Harris by, it could be within 0.2 point, uh, yeah, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 points, very possibly. Could be the closest state of the election this time. Which means, folks, it all rides on Pennsylvania. Because if Harris gets this, she is at 266. Trump's at 262. If he gets this, he's at 281 and wins the election. So in this scenario, Kamala, let's just show it here. If Kamala wins Pennsylvania, then she's at 266. Trump's at 262. It comes down to Wisconsin, which I don't have predicted. So Kamala wins this um, match up here. Meanwhile, if Trump gets it, then he's up at 281. He wins regardless of what happens with Wisconsin, even if it goes to Harris. You see right there, she gets at 257. So Wisconsin back to toss up. Um, Pennsylvania, here's the deal. <clears throat> I don't want to put a lot of stock in polling. And I'm very hesitant to say that not only do one of these states, let's say Wisconsin votes for Trump, Michigan and Pennsylvania vote for the for Kamala. That would be weird for these three states to split. I'm even more hesitant to say that Wisconsin toss, uh, Wisconsin goes different than Michigan goes different than Pennsylvania. Obviously, Wisconsin will end up voting for one or the other. It's not going to be a toss-up, but on this map, I have three different results. So I'm going to say, based on what I'm seeing right now, what it feels like the momentum is to me, I'm going to say Trump wins Pennsylvania from what I'm hearing on the ground there, from Steve Dace reporting some stuff there. Um, 
I'm going to say Trump wins it, though I'm not super confident about this at all. Um, it's just, again, it's just kind of the feeling I have. It's the data I'm seeing. So I'm going to say Pennsylvania tilts Trump right now, and this could very well be, this could also be the closest state. Any four of these states, I think, have the potential to be the closest state in the election. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada. But as it is, here we go. Kamala Harris, 247. Trump, 281. I do think he still has the upper hand, but I think it's extremely close. So let me know what y'all think. I want to hear what y'all have to say. Who's going to win this election? We're going to find out in a, roughly a month. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.